Hi everybody. So we're going to spend the next few sessions learning about Purim, learning about different aspects of Purim. Purim is a weird and wonderful and crazy and cryptic festival. Um, and it kind of seems that Purim last year began with a, a craziness that hasn't ended. It's been Purim for an entire year already with everything upside down. Um, and we're going to be looking at different sides of the Purim um, festival. And this week we're going to look at Purim as a, an act of telling a story, right? We have in the book of Esther, um, in the Megillah, after all the events that happen, we have the story of how the story was recorded. And in the story of how the story was recorded, we're told how to tell the story to future generations. I'll read. Vaychtov Mordechai et dvarim ha'ele v'yishlach svarim el kol ha'yehudim asher b'chol medinot ha'melech ha'chashverosh ha'krovim ha'rachokim. Mordechai recorded these events and he sent dispatches to all the Jews throughout the provinces of King Ha'chashverosh, near and far, charging them to observe the 14th and 15th days of Adar every year. And then he tells the story of why, of what happened, um, and finishes, they were to observe them as days of feasting and merrymaking, and as an occasion for sending gifts to one another and presents to the poor. The Jews accordingly assumed as an obligation that which they had begun to practice and which Mordechai prescribed for them. So, we have him a few things. Um, first of all, we have three out of the four mitzvot, very explicit. Um, the four mitzvot of Purim, they all begin with mem, 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 mem. Um, three of them are mishte, having a feast, mishloch manot, sending gifts to each other, matanot levyonim, sending gifts to the poor. But in the framework of this, we see the fourth mitzvah, which is Megillah, which is reading the story of what happened there. Um, and it's interesting, the Purim and Pesach, which are one festival after the other, um, they're very close together. They, each of the stories kind of can be read in light of the other one, right? The story of Purim, um, actually took place on Pesach and it happened the three days of fasting with the 14th, 15th and 16th of Nisan, which is the days of, of the beginning of Pesach. Um, and in Pesach, we're also told to tell a story. You should tell this story to your children in future generations. But there, we're told to, to tell the story in any way we want. But here, the way that the story is, um, is told here is from a very fixed text. Um, we're told, uh, and we're looking now at the laws of, of Rambam, how he talks about the laws of Purim. He doesn't call it the laws of Purim. He calls it Hilchot Megillah, the laws of the Megillah, because Megillah becomes a metonym for the whole of Purim. Uh, and he says everyone is required to uh, to read out the Megillah, Likro Megillah. The Hebrew word Likro means also reading, but also calling out, right? There's an implied audience in this uh, uh, reading calling of the Megillah. Um, and it seems that you have to either read it um, yourself from a scroll written in a particular way, or hear it from someone else who's reading it from a scroll written in a particular way. And it has to be read exactly in the order, exactly in the, in the words um, of the Megillah. There's no um, creativity in this. There's no um, interpretive process. Um, and we spoke about this idea of uh, authenticity, right? I hate the word authenticity, right? Because I don't exactly understand what it means. But I, I do know that there's a difference between um, a ceremonial reading of the story 
for example, the one we're used to on Purim of uh, standing up, everyone gathered together and reading it from this scroll and parchment um, uh, with the blessings before and the blessings afterwards and all the, the rituals. That's a reading of the story, which is different to, to if I was reading the story in bed or reading it in a university class. Right? That's what a, an authentic story telling is about. What complicates it is that um, uh, although you're not allowed to read it by heart, if it's read out in Hebrew, you don't have to understand it. Right? There's an experience of hearing it in the Hebrew language that even if you don't understand the Hebrew language, you're confronted by the story. Um, interestingly, we have another language in which that happens, which is Greek. If you hear the story in Greek, that also counts. Okay, and that's a, a very ancient source, and we won't go into exactly the place of Greek um, in our tradition, but it's, it's fascinating. Um, but it can also be translated. The Megillah, in theory, can be translated to, um, to German or French or Aramaic or, or any other language. Um, and then anyone who understands that language has fulfilled their obligation, right? So if I, if I, no one does this today, but in theory, in theory it's possible. Um, if you read the story of, of, the, of Esther in English from an English scroll in English letters, an English speaking person has fulfilled the mitzvah by hearing it, but a, a German speaking person hasn't. So, we have different models of what it is to experience a story. One is a ceremony around it. One is feeling part of the community, right? The people are, who are obligated in the hearing of the story, the people addressed by Mordechai in the original uh, commanding to hear the story. And, um, uh, and another is understanding the content. And we spoke about, again, the, the difference between Purim and Pesach where Pesach, there's kind of very obvious um, miracles going on. There's uh, supernatural phenomena happening and you know um, what's going on. Then you can tell the story in, in whatever way you want. In Purim, paradoxically almost, where the, the political action happening in the Megillah um, it's not clear where the, where the miracle is, and maybe you're invited to interpret it um, in order to give it religious significance. There, the, the exact text is very, very important, and the written text is very, very important. And that's kind of, that's something um, paradoxical about Purim, where, whereas the where we'd see like the craziness of Purim um, is dressed up as a very orderly um, text with, uh, with, with clear boundaries around it. So that's a few of the ideas that we discussed in the Sheol. Uh, next week, we'll look at a different aspect of Purim. Have a good week.